In this video, we're going to have a look at creating the Contact Us page for this website. We'll head over to the Contact Us page. And then we're going to use Brizzy to create the page. Then we'll head over to Edit Page with Brizzy. And we'll create the page. So we have the header, we have the footer from the template, and now we're going to start building the page. So we want to add a contact page. So we'll head over to the templates. And in this case, we will look at the kit number two, the light styles. We'll go over to contact. And we're looking for something with a map and a contact form and some contact details. So the one that looks pretty good is this one here. So we'll add that to our page. And you'll see the map and the form. So the first thing we want to do is maybe extend that map across the full page. We'll go over to the Brizzy control, hit the setting, go from boxed to full. Now we have a full width page. And as you can see, it's not, maybe we'd like it a little bit taller. So in order to do that, we'll go over to, well, Full height? No. Let's go to more settings. That's not going to work. So, ah. Right, that's where we have our map is going to be Wall Street and the settings here we can adjust the height. So let's make that 500 p pixels. So no height adjustment here for the content block, but those settings are found in the settings for the map. Right, so we have the map, we've set it to Wall Street. Um, that looks fine, just an example. And then let's have a look at the form. So we're coming to the form, um, first name, last name, email address, subject. Okay, so everything looks fine for the form. So where's that form gonna go? So to do the form settings, we will head over here to the little settings plug, and now we can set up the email. What we can also do while we're setting up that email is we can also hook it up to an app, which means MailChimp, Zapier, Campaign Monitor, any one of these we can integrate. We can also then add the recapture, but for the recapture, we do need our site key and the secret key, which we need to get from. Google. So in this case, it'll just be a normal WordPress email. Only issue that we have here is that the reply to details um, can't be set. Well, who will the reply to be? Um, and we're asked to fill out this field. Um, so I find that a little bit confusing inside Brizzy. Um, on the app side, relatively easy. If you select your app that you'd like to connect to, you can then insert your API key from your provider and carry on with the settings. So in this case, when it comes to the mail, we can leave the mail as is and continue, or we can create our own form and drop it into this page. So also in this page, I don't want the form to be that wide. I'd like to be, I'd like to be much narrower. So to change that, we can't change it here unless we change the padding on the side. What we can do though is add a blank block and then drag the form over to that blank block. And then remove the block it was in previously, and let's reduce that all the way. So now we can put in some content here, which will be the contact, maybe the contact numbers and contact details, and then the form on the right hand side. But as I said, not really happy with the way that Brizzy handles forms, and maybe we want a little bit more um, control. So what we'll do then is head over to our back end and in this case I'm going to be using Fluent Forms um, and to create a form there very easy 
create form, create contact form. There are several others we could have chosen from. First name, last name, email address, subject. What I'm going to do is remove the required from the message and I'm going to make first name and last name required fields. I'll simply click on the name. Yes, make that a required field. Go down to the last name. Also make that a required field. So now the first name, last name, email address are required fields. We'll save that form. To copy the short code, we'll simply click on the short code. It's copied to clipboard. We can now head over back to Brizzy. We're going to delete this content element. And what we'll do now is we're going to add a short code, which is found in WordPress. So we look for WordPress short code, drag that across to the right hand side, go to WordPress, put in the short code, and we now have a form inside of Brizzy. We can now, we've set our width to 100%. Right, so now we have that form. Just to preview that, we'll update those settings. And then we'll preview that form. So the formatting in Brizzy doesn't look right. However, on the front end of the website, the form looks fine. If we want to see what that form looks like before publishing, we can go back to Fluent Forms. We can then go to Preview and Design. In this design mode, we can change the look and feel of our form. There are some drop downs, and we can also create a custom look and feel. Or we can go to Preview Only, and we'll see that that's what the form will look like. And if we look at the form, that's what it looks like. Then on the left hand side of the Contact Us, we'd like to add some content. So there we could add um, uh, maybe we'll put in the physical address. Line one, line two, and maybe we also want to bring in Um, no, we don't want that. If you do have an extra column up here, it's quite easy to go in and delete that. And one, if you want to make this a header, we can simply by clicking on the gear. And here we can change that to, if we wanted to make that a heading, we now have that in, an, in a heading. Right, so let's add some more text. So we'll add another line of text. So one, two, and let's get some contact numbers going. And let's change that also then to, let's make that an, H3, um, well that was the address, so let's make this um, contact numbers, as I said we've made that an H3 and let's add some more text. Um, number one and number two. So that's where we could put our numbers. We have those details. So now when you look at the contact us page, you will be first faced with a map. So you can see where you need to go. And then you'll have your contact information. So we could make that, let's move that up a little bit smaller. 
update and then let's preview that. Right, so there we have the form and the address details and that pretty much looks like a contact form. So let's take a look at the more advanced features available so that we have more control over our form. So let's head over to the back end of the form and have a look at those advanced settings. Now that we've finished uh, with the design of the form, let's go and have a look and see what other settings and integrations are available. So the next thing that we're going to do is we'll go to form settings and you'll see that we have a confirmation setting here under form settings. Thank you for your message. We'll get in touch with you shortly. So maybe we want to personalize that. So we would say add first name. That would mean we can go dear first name. Thank you for your message. We will get in touch with you shortly. Regards the team. So now the user in a very nice way is um, updated with the information that the form has been sent. We'll save those settings. Then what we'll do is we'll head over to email notifications and this is really where you start to see a bit of the power of Fluent Forms. So what we'll do is we'll go into the settings. The first thing that we'll do is we'll make this the admin notification email. So we'll send that to the admin, which is the admin in WordPress. We, we can also select a field from the form if we were going to return this to the customer. But in this case, we'll just send that off to the admin. In the subject, once again, we can say create our own message. We can say contact form and we'll remove that and we'll say first name and maybe we want to know what the subject is. Right, so now we'll know what the subject is. Here is the information, the summary of the form that we'll receive so we won't worry here about personalizing or creating a special message. And then under advanced, this is where we can put in a lot more control about um, the form. So we could say from first name space last name. So we say that's from the website. The from email, um, we could put in our own email address, but the reply to email, we can now put in the email from the client. So let's take that out and let's put in the email. We can BCC that email to somebody. We can also CC that email to somebody. And we could even set conditional logic based on a field on the form. So in this case, it will say from that person, the email will use the domain email. And then the reply to will be the reply to. So the from email could also be um, the admin email. And the reply to would be the reply to the customer. Once we're happy with that, we can save the notification and enable. So now we have that notification enabled. If we wanted to integrate with other services, we could add other confirmations. We could add customer custom scripts and CSS and here we can head over to the modules and we can also integrate with our preferred service. Um, we can even go as far as saving it, saving the response to a Google Sheet. So Fluent Forms definitely gives you a lot more control over your form and is designed for forms which make sense. And here we can ha we have a, we will have a library of all our forms. So if we head over now to the Contact Us page and we refresh, you'll see that we have the address details and we have the form information. If we complete that form, so we'll just 
complete that. Submit the form. Dear Bruce, thank you for your message. We will get in touch with you shortly. Regards, the team. So very nice personal way of letting somebody know that the form has been sent.